There was never a time in this world where Zyru was better than Simple. The stats may be there and they can show it how they want, but <laughs> when I'm talking about how you look at the game and how you play the game, Zyru is incredible. The Vice yes. is incredible. But they play the game in like the team game. They know how to play it. They know the position, know what to spot in. Now, Zyru gets some incredible kills, sure. But Simple like does things where I go, you shouldn't do that. But you did it and it worked. It doesn't make sense. Like he, to me, he breaks the game. <risos> Fala galera, aqui é o DZR da GG Easy e tá inaugurado oficialmente o segundo ano do nosso podcast. Galera, hoje eu trago para vocês uma entrevista mega exclusiva para esse podcast. Por isso, inclusive, que nesse ano nós estamos trazendo mais algumas novidades, que é o podcast em vídeo. Então nós vamos fazer as lives aqui, fazendo as entrevistas com nossos convidados e deixaremos publicado no nosso canal no YouTube, tá bom? Então não esquece de dar o subscribe, ativar o sininho para você receber sempre que tiver uma nova entrevista aí, nossas entrevistas são sempre focadas no mundo do esportes e hoje eu anuncio para vocês também uma novidade da GG Easy que nós vamos expandir o nosso universo, sair um pouco do universo de Counter Strike e começar a bater mais em Valorant, em League of Legends, em Dota e no mercado de esportes como um todo. Essa entrevista é mega exclusiva que nós fizemos hoje com o James Banks, apresentador oficial do PGL Major de Estocolmo, foi maravilhoso, cara, uma pessoa simples, uma pessoa bacana, com uma história muito bonita de se ouvir uma história de inspiração muito forte tem mensagem dele para vocês tem agradecimento tem como ele começou todo mundo que ele conhece né dentro do cenário é um cara muito envolvido falamos bastante sobre simple zayu enfim curte aí o vídeo espero que vocês gostem vamos nessa Uh, people, uh, let's start uh, from the beginning. So we are going to to get the major, the PGL, and everything that's done. But uh, for everyone that doesn't know you yet, uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, where are you from? Uh, mm -hmm. How old are you? And things like that. <laughs> um, I'm an old man now. Let's start with that. I'm, I'm 31. Um, I've been, oh I've been involved. God. In esports and, and Counter Strike since 2003. Like, I initially picked up the game around like late 2002, but I, I started to learn and understand more about it when it came to 2003. You wouldn't call it professional in today's levels, you'd call it like pro semi professional, but I went to some of the big events. I went and traveled. Uh, we're competing in around the top teams just in the, the United Kingdom and playing against other good teams in Europe from the okay. 1.6 days, 2003 to 2007. This is. Then I came away from Counter Strike because esports wasn't in a position where you could make enough money to live. So yes. I had to do some studying. I put a lot of time, basically the same effort and time I put into Counter-Strike. I put into a single player game called Virtual Fighter V. Um, really good fun, fighting game, um, action packed. And basically I could control my own schedule, you know, because yes. in Counter-Strike, when you're playing with a team, you've got to play certain hours where everyone else is playing. On this, you could put the grind in around my studies, what I was doing. I actually went on to win a silver medal at the WCG, which is really cool. Um, and then I played a little bit of Forza, the racing game, because basically I just loved esports. It was an escape from <laughs> the life that I had in, in, in London. Um, I come from like what you guys would probably call the hood. We, 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 we call it like the, the ends, the estate. Um, so like very low income, poor housing and stuff, but a okay. uh, very good family life, um, great friends, people around me. And uh, luckily, esports was a thing that saved me from it. Like uh, I've told this story before as well that. When I was younger, I used to sell drugs, not like I'm talking about like big drug dealing or something like that. Okay. But it was like we used to, as kids, take it from some guys, take it from one position, take it to another because kids would not be stopped by the police. You know, these older guys selling the drugs were using it to their advantage. Uh, sadly, it's part of where you're from, where, where I'm from, that there's not that many opportunities and you kind of end up into that life. But I'm very fortunate to have great family, great support and friends around me that I found Counter-Strike. I stuck to that. I definitely wasn't good at school. Like I'm not very book smart on that sense. I don't have great education. <laughs> Um, and then esports just kept getting bigger. I stayed involved. At one point, I was working like a normal nine to five job, you know. And then, mm -hmm. um, then I got a chance to work for Zowie Gear when they started. So they make all the mice and the keyboards. Um, they obviously now got bought out by BenQ. But when that company first started, I was very good friends with Heaton and Spawn from the old school 1.6 days. I've um, known them guys for many years. And when I was playing, they said to the people who they were working with at Zowie that if you want to start doing some like marketing stuff, this guy obviously he knows the game, he knows Counter Strike. But also he'll be able to tell people the good things about the product in the right way. And they basically took a chance on me, gave me a job, and I ended up working for them. The first part-time, then full-time, we did some cool events. And they basically put a camera in my face, which I'd never done before. So what I used to do was actually, I'd hold the camera like this and just hide <laughs> behind the camera. So you'd only see the player's face, and I'd ask the questions. 
because I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be seen <laughs> at all. So I was running around doing interviews in the, the CS 1.6 days and the early StarCraft 2 days, like trying to think I knew what I was doing. Um, and eventually they started to say to me, look, we need better quality. So then they gave us a proper camera and like a tripod and a microphone. And I'm on camera now and I'm like, oh, okay, this is kind of weird. But I guess the benefit <laughs> for me was I was passionate about it. I didn't want to ask questions that like were just interesting to me. I wanted to go deeper into things. I wanted to have like longer style interviews, more in-depth stuff um, because I knew a lot of these players or I got to know them over the time. If there were new players coming up, I kind of got into an interview style where it was very personal, very understanding to these different players. And then CS came around. I tried to be a commentator at the beginning a little bit. Um, I did like the very early days, but again, no money. I was working a full-time job in the evening, just doing like all the commentary for crazy hours. Um, then we got big events started to come up, more money came into it. We fast forward to where we are now. And for the last like, what's this, 2021 now? For the last four or five years, it's been my full-time job. And I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to say that. My and God. I still love what I do every day. And... It just continues to get bigger. It continues to get better. And I don't think if you told me when I was 13 in 2003 that we would be at this stage where we are now, I'd be like, nah, you're lying. Because back then it was just for passion. You didn't understand. Like It was like, I'd, I'd explain it to people in this way, right? Yeah. So Counter-Strike in the old days was not about winning the money. It was okay. not about winning the big events. You wanted to win the big events. But the reason for it was, first of all, you want to be the best in like your country and your region. And it was no, no one was focused on, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm doing this. You know? Okay, I'm gonna, you're going to be the best, the best player. Yeah, and, and that was it. The hunger was there. Everyone was focused on, I want to be the best. I want to be the team that everyone's talking about in the forums. None of us, we would have loved to say, yeah, we want these arenas, all this prize money, you know, like million yeah. dollars and stuff. But that wasn't the focus. We were just thinking, this is crazy. Someone's given us some money to play some games. We had to travel to another country to play some games. And it, now look at where we are. Like this is, everyone is traveling. Everyone's getting opportunities. And if you're good enough, you can show your skills. So like, Esports are just blown up in such a big, crazy way. It's big, and you are in the center of this big thing. You are the, the <laughs> yeah, middle. A little, bit, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Oh come on! <laughs> But this is a, a long, short story, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, That's condensed. <laughs> That's condensed, and that was still long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do some questions. Ask some questions uh, to bring cool. you back. Not so uh, on the beginning of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw you in some interviews uh, from other channels. I know a lot about you, about your history, and it's a great history for for everyone. Everyone needs to to know your real history. It's not uh, it's not a kind of thing you oh you are there because you are there. So you have a, yeah. a big a long path. Uh, you had a long path to to get there and a, a, a tough path. I, I, I know it. And I But, think it's important to show it, you know, because um, I think hmm. many people don't understand like sacrifice and struggle that comes of getting to where you want to go. And so the one thing I always try to do is is show people that, yeah, things can be bad and like not so great at the beginning of how things are, are going. But like, no, what you and, and, and this is another thing. It's the same as football, right? You're never always guaranteed to be the next Messi, the next Ronaldo, you know, yes. like it, it's not going to happen. But if you don't have that dream in the first place, you'll definitely never reach that. So you still have to try. You still have to try over and over again, even if you yep. fall uh, yep. a thousand times. That's what's happened with, with you and a, a lot of another guys. I met you from Gaulais. So, Gaulais. Hey, there we go. He's <laughs> connecting people. <laughs> yeah, it's connect a, a lot of people. Man. <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, I met you from. So, I, I hosted uh, the PGL Major in a, mm. in, a, in a bar here in Brazil for nice. everyone who wants to, to watch. And a bar like a football uh, yeah, or a yeah. soccer, those, uh, and and it was perfect, man. It, it, it's a very different uh, event for us because we bring the experience from the soccer to the to the CSGO, and, and it was perfect. Uh, we are planning now next year to to move forward with this kind of uh, events in local bars to to, to small places, but that yep. we can bring people together to watch CSGO and watch you in the biggest events. Yeah, the, the, on the CSGO. fans, man. Bring them together and let them enjoy it together. Talk Counter-Strike, few yeah. drinks and stuff, yeah, food, yeah. relax. That's what it should be, definitely. Because that's the thing. where we, We're in a point now where arenas are being filled out, right? So there's no tickets even left. So having these kind of bars in each country and stuff that we can do something like this is like just watching football with your friends in a bar. So that's cool. We're bridging the gap. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very different. So 
the the idea is the same as as you said as, uh, as you told us about the the, the very beginning uh, the main idea it's not about the money it's to bring mm. people together uh, of of something that like uh, of something that they like together so yeah. we want to to watch uh, CS go but also we want to connect to people who like CS go we want to connect with everyone that we can share our thoughts, our teams, <laughs> our best played. So this is our idea. And this is how we we had idea to to bring you to 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 have this conversation with us. And it is cool as well, right? Because what I look at with this is if you're doing it in bars as well, where it's just in your local community, someone might walk by and they've never seen Counter Strike before, but they might sit and have a drink and be interested. Yeah. And they can see everyone, they can talk to everyone, you know, they can bring more viewers, more people into the scene. Exactly, exactly. I'm speaking in Portuguese. <laughs> I'm confusing. <laughs> the natural, the natural way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. But we had this experience in, uh, on the in the major. A lot of people yeah. was in the bar and, and asking, "What is this? This is Counter Strike." Yeah, this is Counter Strike. So <laughs> how big it is? I played uh, as the 1.6. So, oh, okay. So you found so, some people who played yeah. it in the past and they see it again, like, oh, this is still going on. They didn't even know that CSGO became so so big. Yeah. So, man, let, let me ask you another question. Uh I talked about Arch and Furia, and mm -hmm. how was your impressions about our Brazilian teams? Because you know, uh CSGO on, on seas on Europe is very strong, yeah. but uh comparing with NA and Latam. But what do you think of Brazilian teams? Sharks, Furia, uh, MIBR, uh, Godsend. What do you think about these teams and, and how, how far can you can you think they can go? So obviously Furia, right? They're, they're the big ones. They finally took over the mantle from looking at your MIBR side of things. And obviously everyone knows what Furia can do. They are the ones that can progress the fastest. I'm interested to see like what these with Zinni going out, you know, what these changes are going to bring. Remember Drop's not such a, an experienced player, but they still got to a good position at the majors. So you've got to be keep, keeping a keen eye on what they can do. And obviously they do get to the big events to get this experience. When you're talking about the other teams, like for MIBR, obviously it's such a huge brand. It's a legendary brand from way back in the day. You know, and I know it's what all the Brazilian community love, but like, in terms of the players they have right now, for me, it's like they almost would need to merge or like find two of the lower down Brazilian teams and put them together to have some success. Because I see a lot of these young Brazilian players who are really skilled, like crazy skilled, but they just don't have a chance of getting any experience over in Europe. Like obviously you mentioned like 9Z. Uh, they, I spent some time with Zach. Zach's a real good friend of mine. We always spend time together uh, whenever at events. So from we back in the day to where we are now, um, we had our he... podcast recorded with Zach. Oh, you did it with him? Yeah, hey! yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, um, when they were in Denmark, they started in Sweden first, sorry, and they played for Blast, but they played it from Sweden. They were playing from Inferno Online. So me and Potty, uh, we did a video together for the major. We went to Inferno Online. And then the guy there, he's like, oh, Zach's here. And I said, oh, shit. Okay, we got to go go say hi. When you <laughs> see Zach, he's always so positive. He's always so happy and yeah. as well. Yeah, he and he's is. a guy who obviously he played he played very high level right and especially in terms of coaching but even now it's so good that someone with his experience and his passion is like working with a younger team to help develop them further um and and what what i see right now is like i wouldn't touch godsend and i wouldn't touch furia mm -hmm. but i feel like between some of the other teams so like your sharks like your 9z uh like your mibr if you kind of sadly and, and i know this sounds bad but you take different players from them teams and you try and put them back together because I see like some aspects of these teams that are very strong, very skilled and capable. And then some aspects where I'm like, okay, you've got a weak link here, you know? Maybe the sniper is not capable enough right now to be on a tier one level. Because we can we often see this where there's so many skilled teams and players that they don't kind of come together at the right time as one team. And you have almost too many teams. And I know there is so many Brazilian people, but there is only so many teams can get the spots, right? So if you don't have the right five players and you're not getting always qualified to the main events to go travel abroad and get that yeah. experience unless you've got a lot of money that can maybe put you in a boot camp in europe for like three six months or something like that then it's gonna be very hard for them to be on the same level as these teams and learn in the same way it's like before it was go to north america right like what mibr did originally what fury did like all these teams said go to north america and then work your way in but now north america is so low down and it. it's like okay north american practice isn't even good we need to be in europe and it, it's sad that it has got to that 
and obviously Valorant is sadly a big reason of it as well and, and just a lot of players is moving over and, and, and killing off the scene of it but I actually feel like we're in a position now where it's kind of like if you include CIS in Europe so like obviously Navi being number one Gambit being up there as well if you put CIS in Europe the best place because they can practice against mm -hmm. each other and probably South America is like the next best place right now then it's North America and then you go further down right to like Asia and, and all, all that side of things um but yeah, I think I think you've definitely got Fury looking good. Godsent, I've liked what I've seen for them. They spent a lot of time in Europe. Obviously, Godsent as a as a company is is based in Europe in Sweden, if I'm if my memory's correct. But then yes. for the other ones, we need to just like get some someone really smart to start putting these teams together and working out like what's <laughs> the best option because there 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 is a chance where some of these guys could make it to the very top. But with the current team around them, it's just like you can't physically carry the rest of the players with you. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Mm, actually, my beer is it's our favorite thing here, of course. Yeah, we love Furia, we love Godsend, we love all Brazilian teams. But my beer made history with with Fallen, yeah. with Fur, Godzilla, uh, Taco, with Kobu and them stuff back in the 1.6 days, they yeah. made history, you know. Like, the, and this is the thing like, MIBR as a, as a team and a company, they obviously got enough money. Yeah. How they want to rebuild this new MIBR. If they get the right people behind it, then then you can go back to the top again. You know, then you've got something to work with. But uh, I believe it's very difficult to build uh, a champions team again. Definitely. Like you know, it's kind of hard to find uh, falling in their the high level. It's kind of hard to find another simple, another Zayu. Yeah. It's very very difficult to to keep the the mind of this, the mindset of the game on these young guys but i believe of course uh, I, I, I should believe in god saint and furia uh, uh furia first i believe the furia it will, it will be our the, our great team here in brazil in the mm -hmm. next years uh followed by god saint and maybe uh 9z it's coming to to be a another great team because they are from argentina they are yeah. not from brazil but he has a, a, a lot of players from Brazil. So I like it's a that, lot. It's, it's Try. Try is looking like the next best thing, right? He looks yeah, so good. Man. He looks so, and he's got very good attitude. And uh, I did interviews with him. And his English is good as well. So like he's got the full package in like, what you want from a player right now. He's, he's very good. He's very good. That, did you watch the, the, the game against uh, Vitalic? Yes. Yeah, I was there. That was for Blast. That was for Blast. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy. Like, Man, that was like what RPK's what last game, and yeah. 9Z were like, it's not going to be good for you. Like, you're going <laughs> to end on a bad note here, aren't you? You're going to end losing a game, getting destroyed, and everyone was like, what, what, what is this? And it's what, got what, a Gandalf. It's got a Gandalf. You shall not pass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like, you may be here, and this may be your last game, but it doesn't matter who, who doesn't you matter. are. We're going to destroy you, you know? We're just going to play. And, and the thing I liked about that is we've had many teams, if you go back through history and Counter-Strike, you will get a best of one upset win and then we don't see them again, you know? Yeah. But they qualify for then straight after the next showdown as well. And even if they didn't get a win, the point is proven that they're still good in their region and they still can qualify. So that for me was impressive because many times we just see, oh, they qualify once, they get eliminated and they don't qualify again. We don't hear from them. So it was nice to see that they still put that work in and they're still yeah. grinding out and find some success. Perfect. That's, that's it. That's it. And I, what about... Uh... We are talking about Zayu. We are talking about simple and fall and mm -hmm. fair. What is your dream team? Do you have a dream team that you? <laughs> Can I just take all of Navi now? Is that possible? <laughs> oh, <come on>. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the easy one, right? Today, That's the really easy one. <laughs> all right. So if I was to put together like five players from different teams when it comes to that, oh, so I would take hundred percent simple because, like, I don't care what HLTV rankings have ever said. There was never a time in this world where Zyru was better than Simple. The stats may be there and they can show it how they want, but <laughs> when I'm talking about how you look at the game and how you play the game, Zyru is incredible. The Vice yes. is incredible. But they play the game in like the team game. They know how to play it. They know the position, know what to spot in. Now, Zyru gets some incredible kills, sure. But Simple like does things where I go, you shouldn't do that. But you did it and it worked. It doesn't make sense. Like he, <laughs> To me, he breaks the game. And like yeah. you speak to other analysts and commentators and they will say the same. If you are another player and you try to copy simple, it will not work for you. No. He just has a better understanding, a better feeling for the game than anyone else. So he has to be on everyone's roster like that. It's um, within. 
it's yeah yeah it's, it's a thing, he, him every time he's, he's just got in, kind of like in the matrix you know you see all those yeah. zeros and ones and that's yeah. just him going he's in for the it. matrix that's perfect it's, <laughs> in the matrix. it's impossible to kill him did you see <laughs> nico trying to kill him with that jiggle? Just turn around back yeah three times <laughs> it's impossible so so we got simple as the first one then i'd have glaive as the in-game leader because okay Glaive can take any roster, it seems, and have some success. He can even at times pop off and do really well. You know, he can have great performances from start to finish. Then I would love to actually pull in Mr. K. Serato because K. Serato stays so consistent. And if you look at his stats, some of it's gone up and down with it. But uh -huh. when he goes beast mode as a rifler, he can do so much for you. Like, he can actually take over and dominate the server. And people may look back to when Furia first came up and go, oh, he's not as good as he was then. But like the way Counter Strike's played has changed a lot. The system and, and and what you can get away with is different as well. But on an individual level, from an eye test of how he plays, how he moves, like he is always going to be good for getting you a couple of kills. Like he can hold onto a site, he can push on up and, and and make that work for you. So that's my three. Um, fourth player, I would go for Nico because Nico is the only player with a rifle that can achieve those stats. Right? Like if you look at it, top three players in the world every single time: AWP, AWP. It'll be and then Nico's like, hi, like, I'm still here just rifling and killing everyone. Like, I'm the only one without an orb, but I'm still dominating. Like, I think if he if he if he ends well, like for the year, obviously, like in terms of stats, I'm just pulling it off my head, but he could probably be in like second or third. Like if it's, if it goes simple Zyron and him again, and then maybe device comes in a bit later because obviously he had a bit of a drop off on it, that'd mm -hmm. probably be right. Bit bit would actually be like my fifth player because there has never been an 18 year old rifler. Who's hitting this kind of headshot machine? I think his headshot percentage is higher than Screams yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what? And he's, he's 18, devil. and he's <laughs> so <laughs> like, he's so like calm and chill. Like, he doesn't, he didn't get onto the land stages, right? He's, he's undefeated on land. Every land he's been on, they've won. He's not scared of the crowd. He's not scared of the, the change. He doesn't feel the pressure. No. And, and then we, we joked about it. Um, I did, when I did the interview with Simple, I said, like, bit play so close to the monitor. Is this because, like, you don't want him to see the crowd? And then, and then Sasha says in the interview, he says like, oh no, like that's just how he plays. We even tell him not to play like that because it's so crazy, like how close he sits next to it. Like you got to be careful of your eyes for sure. Like you don't want to end up with glasses. I'd, like if it's not needed, you might make it worse. But he, he's 18. He's won so much money as a rookie already. He has a really good, like cool, calm and collected, like a, a presence when it comes to it. And he clearly is just enjoying Counter-Strike. He, he definitely follows the leader, you know, like, if Boomer says something or Simple saying something, then then he's going for it and he's it's working. Going. So yeah, that's not bad. Two out of five Navi players. I, I, I branched out a little bit with it, you know. Okay, I didn't take okay. five. <laughs> oh, and coach know. wise, coach wise, oh, coach would be hard. Coach, oh, mm, because I feel like you probably have to add Zonic because Zonic and Glaive working okay. together, you know, uh -huh. it probably would be a must. And I love Blade as a coach but I don't think his system would work with a mixed European roster as well. Mm. You know, like, if you think I've got a Brazilian no. in there, I've got Europeans, and I've got two Ukrainians. Like, the way they play the game is very different. Like, you can't copy what Blade is doing and put it into, like, an Astralis or a G2. It wouldn't work on the same way. But yeah, I think Zonic would probably be the best for that because he could work very closely with Glaive. Uh, a they have a relationship together. And right. I think they have authority, you know? Like, Simple, Nico, Bit, Kesarata, they would all listen. They would all listen and say, yeah. okay, if that's what Glaive and Zonic are saying, we, we trust you guys. You know, four majors, not really going to mess with that. <laughs> that's a good team, I believe. Uh, did you get the list, Tom? <laughs> Pegou a list aí, Tom? Peguei um pouco. Pegou. Simple, Nico. Simple, Nico. Kassarat. Bitch. Bitch. Good. They always say, you call it bitch. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> When you say it, it sounds like bitch. <laughs> We usually put a, a Vogel uh, after every consonant. <laughs> Bitch. Bit. Bit. No. Bit. <laughs> yes. 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 My so, goodness. So, 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 so. Don't, don't show that. That, that, that video to him. Please. Cancel, cancel. <laughs> no, let, let's go again. We can cut this part. <laughs> I was just like, I definitely didn't say bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, bit. Uh, Simple, Nico, Zonic, Glaive, and the other Cacerato. one? Cacerato. Oh. Cacerato. We call it Cacerato. 
Casarato. Oh, there we go. Casarato. Oh, that's a lot of, when, that sounds nice. that sounds more impressive, right? If, a, if we can get English commentators when he does some really cool kills to be yeah. screaming like Pesarato like that, like strong, powerful, you know, that would be <laughs> that, much better than when we just go. Pesarato. That's a word we made up called caseratado. It's something like that we, mean? Uh, it means like you. Mm, how can I explain you in English? It's something <laughs> when you. It's like you were. Killed by simple and you were simpled. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, you get know? It. I get it. Yeah, so that's Cass like what happens to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm with it. I, I'm throw you something. I throw you a rock. So yep. I dropped you a rock. So I caserato killed you. So you were caseratado. Caserato. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you can use that on blast <laughs> and every the other events. Brazilian gonna love it. <laughs> Perfect. So talking about Navy and spe specifically about Simple, how mm -hmm. was your uh, how is your your friendship with him? It's it's something that happens time ago, or it's something new and it happens in PGL Major. How it is your friendship with Simple? So I've obviously had the pleasure of being able to interview him like over and over again across so many events, mm -hmm. um, and we've always been able to talk. But like I'd say in the last two years since i've moved to ukraine obviously it's, it's a lot better like it, there's more things to do not just counter-strike related and obviously i was always supporting navi we were always just talking a little bit about the game i'd ask him questions before events and stuff and then um we have some mutual friends here in kiev as well mm -hmm. spend some time together talk a little bit more and then it was like during the major because obviously he knew me he knew, knew what was going on when my fiance died he just just reached out and um he was like I, I I have got no words. I don't know what to say. He's like, are you okay? Yeah. Like, are we good? And I think obviously that situation just brought us closer because it was there was being friends, and then and now it's very different. Like, um, we we definitely even talk even more now because I think he just he's he understands from a, a human perspective that like yeah, it was a tough situation to go through. Yeah, and um and and he was just there to support me, and um and I didn't expect it. I didn't, I didn't think it like and, and and this is it. All the Navi team were there, by the way. Like. It's just obviously me and Sasha, we can communicate better. We communicate and known each other longer as well. It was like Boomich was straight away, just come up to me and hugged me and he just wouldn't let me go. It was like, it, he just says, he goes, I, I don't know what to say. Like, just, just hope you're okay. And then this is like a, a young guy going through this stuff, you know? And so like, because we talk, because we spend a lot of time together, because, because I'm based out here and obviously I support the guys. It was just like, they, they, they wanted to make sure I was all right because it was just such a, a crazy situation. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. He's, he looks like a great guy. Uh, of oh, definitely, man. Uh, definitely. Like, no matter how famous he is, no matter like, yeah. what, what money he has or anything like that, it, it, it hasn't changed him in a way. And he's still human. Like, when I'm telling him thank you for the support and like what he was doing for me, he's like, You don't need to thank me, man. He goes, like, you're, you're a good person. And like, that's what he is as well. He just, he's enjoying his life. Um, he, he loves what he does. He wants to be the best. And, and, and he's the best, he's, finally. He's, he's, he's showing it. Yeah, there we go. You, you get the major, you get all the other parts with it. And, and now it's time to see see what they can do going forward. But um, he's still just a, a great person, and and these toxic traits that maybe were spoken about when he was younger and stuff. He, he's definitely worked on it. You know, he's he's um, come full circle. It's his development as well. Yeah, it, it looks the same for me and for us. From us to to watching here for for so so long distance. He he looks like a great guy. He looks like um, I can compare him with Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. they are close. the The story of them it's very close uh, of their commitment to the game. He's man, I never seen. And, and even, even outside of the game, so Sasha. Um, and and this is a great thing, right? Sasha does a lot of these things and doesn't like talk about it publicly. We only found out recently yeah. that like local schools in Kiev and stuff, he was donating money to for like the computer clubs for the schools and things like that, and. Um, He's doing things not just to, like benefit him and just just make his life better. He's doing things that help other people as well. And and a lot of people when they get so famous or so rich, they lose that aspect. So it's, yeah. it's very impressive for someone so young to be so grounded. So young, and I, I can't say this is like a fact, but I think also the fact he has an older brother who, who's very smart on them kind of things as well, and they have a close relationship that probably helps a lot as well because it's some extra guidance, you know. Perfect, perfect, and. What about the next steps of James? What do you plan? Next oh, reactions? Man. Yeah, come on. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to be doing the, the, the Blast Global Finals. So that's starting obviously next week. Next week. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay. And then um, 
then I'm done for the year. Then I, I I've got to just kind of piece my life back together slowly now. Yeah. Like um, in on the events and stuff. And and this is this is the crazy part. When obviously my my fiance died, a lot of people were sat there saying like, oh, you should go home and like mm-hmm. you should be with your family and like. And then they're saying, oh, you're so strong. And I, actually, I don't think I was strong in the sense as what people thought because work, while I'm working, it's easy to be in work mode. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You you have to sit there. You have to not head. cry. You have to like just get on with it and do the interviews and stuff. But the, the hardest part was, I was literally it was on the media day when Navi uh, first did their day of media. So I'm doing the content, doing the interviews, and then literally in 12 hours I'm filming the content and I have to fly back to Kiev. Um, I sleep for like three hours. I have to go to the funeral because so I wanted to make sure the major still had content, right? You know, I didn't mm-hmm. want to just leave straight away. I, I had a job to do not just for like myself but for PGL and for the community. The first major back, I'm like, I'm not letting this situation mess it up. Like, she wouldn't want that either. And mm. um, funny story here is that in 2019, I got to work my first ever major. I'd never worked a major before. It was a star okay. ladder one. And um, at the time, my son, who is not, um, it's not my son I had with her. It's a son I had from a past relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we broke up. He basically had to come live with us in Ukraine because his mum wasn't very well. Mm. And it nearly stopped me being able to do the major in star ladder. And me and my, my fiance who passed away, she she ne- doesn't have a kid. I told her, look, you didn't sign up for this. You don't have to like be here while my son comes to live with us and stuff. Like, if you oh. want to leave, then I understand. She didn't want to leave. She said she was completely fine with it. She goes, we just got to do this as a couple. We've got to make it work. And I was then saying to her, okay, well, I'm going to cancel the major. And she's like, I know how much the major means to you. She's like, this is your first one. It's all you've been talking about. It's all you've been preparing for. She's like, look, we'll, we'll get these days out of the way before the major. And mm-hmm. she goes, I'll look after him. We'll make it work. We'll find a way of doing it. So go. I even went to the major and I was away for, for I think it's three weeks, four weeks. And they'd only been like l- knowing each other for like a few, maybe one week or two weeks. And she completely like looking after him, taking him to the nursery, like changing his clothes, washing him. He's like a three year old kid, you know, you're not doing any of that. She did all of that and dropped everything she was doing just so that I could go and do the major. There so then go. this happens during the next major. And I'm like, she must want me to continue. Like she's, yeah. I, I got to keep going. You I got to make sure this works. And yeah, like so, I basically did as much content as I could in the time I had. I got the latest flight to Kiev, flew to Kiev, uh, went to the funeral. I was so tired, I was so dead. I did all the funeral parts. I'm obviously, like trying to support her family as well. Um, and like, it's just a horrible, it's a horrible situation. Like, it's just, just, I've been to many funerals of friends who have been like, they died, they've been mm-hmm. shot, whatever. And I've had family like my nan when she died. It makes you cry, it makes you hurt, but like you can deal with it. There is nothing worse than this when it's like someone young who who didn't, yes. didn't like you don't expect it. You know these complications happen. We know it can happen, but you never think it's going to happen to you. And you just like you're planning the rest of your life. It's like like I can say this straight up that I never loved a woman before. I'd always put my job and my my own wants mm-hmm. before that. It wasn't until I'm my son that I had someone else where, like, I put his needs before mine, you know, because that's that's your flesh and blood, that's your kid. Yes. But never with a relationship, never with a woman had I cared so much about a relationship because I was like, oh, I had a girlfriend, you know, like, you go out, yeah, you, 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 it's you different. live whatever. But it wasn't, I never thought about it. Then when I met her, like, it changed everything, the way she was with my son, the, the way we, we felt about each other, the, the connection. That's when you kind of actually know, like, oh, real love is, is actual thing, you know, because yeah. I, I think it's people will say the word, oh, I love you all the time, or they'll just say it, like, oh, yeah, I love you. But then that relationship dies in like six months, nine months, you know. But this was the first time it, it was real. And then the fact she was gone and just taken away from me like then, there was nothing I could do. It's just like, it was crushing. So then I did three days total in Kiev, so the funeral day and then two days after when I'm trying to like sort everything else out. And just being in this house, like this is still the house that we were in together. Okay. Being in this house, it was just killing me. Like I just, you couldn't, you, you, it's just the, the, the memories, the thoughts, yeah, and the stuff that's impossible. here. Like, it was the, the worst, worst feeling ever. And then I get back to the major, I fly back in. Everyone's obviously like worried about me and making sure I'm okay. But like, then I just got back into work mode, you know? You like flip yeah. the switch. But the, the, the tough part was, is like, I'd go, I'd wake up in the morning early. Uh, I always go gym before the events. Mm-hmm. I like to just like get the blood flowing and feel good. And so I'd go to the gym. And most of the time at that early time in the morning, no one was there. So I'd be like working out, doing my weights. And then like something would hit me or I'd think about something and you just start crying again. But then as soon as like the players or any other talent came into the gym, Mm-hmm. Again, I'm just like, it's like the poker face comes back on. And I'm like, hi, everyone, like fist bumps or whatever, like cool, and then just keep working out. And then I go back to the hotel room. 
and you feel sad again, but then you get mm -hmm. to the major and everyone around you and everything feels good. So like the, the goal for me was just like survive the days, spend as little time on my own as possible and sleep yes. the rest of the time and just keep going through the whole thing as much as I can. And it obviously worked out really well. And then with Narby winning it, it was like crazy because I told Sasha this, I told Simple, mm. I said, I appreciate you. He was with me every night, by the way. So every night, and luckily they 3 0'd their way through the groups because obviously they got a few more days off. But mm -hmm. even on game days, he was with me and like he'd okay. get me a whiskey and I'm drinking and, and he'd obviously make sure that like he's he's going to sleep on time and things. But he's spending his personal time, which like I told him, I don't want to distract you from winning this major because if they didn't win, I'd feel partly responsible, you know, like that you're spending so much time with <laughs> me, you're looking after me. I was like, shit, this is like a, this is extra stress. He was you know? drinking was with stress. James. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm saying. Like, and, and, he was obviously he he knows what he's doing. He's looking after himself. He's not he's like he's still drinking the water, he's still drinking just cola instead. But like he's taking his own personal time where he maybe would be practicing or, mm -hmm. or putting some time in with like looking at the strats or whatever. And he was dedicating time that was very serious for his job and for what they want as a goal to me. And so when they won it at the end, oh my god, and not only was I just so happy, but also I felt relief because it was like we finished the major, the major was great, it, it did what it did. Navi won. My friends won and um and the community support and everything else was just insane. Mm -hmm. I remember when so we obviously did the final interview, Boomish proposed to his girlfriend and I was so shocked. I was like, oh, huh? like because we'd done the interview of everyone, and then Boomish is like <laughs> asking his girlfriend live on the stream to get married. I was like, I did not expect that. We said, yeah. to, the said <laughs> to Sasha afterwards, I said, Did he tell you? And like no one knew. He, no he that was just like Boomish hyped up and he he went and did it, and, and obviously. I wish him the best of luck. It was so surprising. And then at the end, like Navi are, Navi are signing in, like autographs, and taking all the pictures and stuff. Um, we've got this great picture of, of me and Sasha when we're, we're like uh, holding the trophy together. He he put the trophy into my arms and we took my a picture. God. And then um, and then afterwards, he, there's that video obviously of him giving me the mouse, which I didn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. expect. Yeah, you have the mouse? Didn't know about it. Yeah, I got it. So basically, I've ordered um, like a, a glass. I don't use it. Okay. So I, I have the mouse. Like this is the same style of mouse, but this is my one. Okay. His mouse is going into like a glass frame. And <laughs> forever. In <a> box. <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it, and we're gonna get it like signed on a piece of paper back, and just have it displayed like behind me here or something. I need to, I need to work this all out and make some sort of like display sure, collection. I would do the but same. The day I got it, right? Someone offered me five thousand dollars cash for it. Five thousand dollars cash for it. I said I'm never selling it. Like no. that's like, first of all, it's yeah. a gift, and it's, it's the greatest thing. But I did. I'll tell you this. I didn't ever play a game of Counter Strike with it, but I did plug it in. Just to see if his mouse was any different to mine. I wanted to feel it to see, like, okay, is that good? Is it different? Because this is the same exact mice. We both used the super light, right? So I was doing it. And I'm and I kept I plugged both of them in, yeah. And I'm doing this, and I'm like, okay, it's the same. Like it's the same, it's the same. Is the same. This, is, this is that good. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, maybe Logitech gave him like some special one. Like yeah, maybe he's got like something that's like ridiculously good. But no, it's legit, it's the same mouse, he's just that good. So the myth, myth is gone, you know, it's no, it's, it's, it's no craziness. But um, That's a great I, story. I, I remember, like, for me, and I, I've said this so many times on any interviews or any anything I've done, when I'm doing interviews, I never make the interviews about me. I don't care about, like, making jokes about me or, like, bringing anything on to me. Uh -huh. I want it to be about the player. I want us to learn about the player. And that's sure. their time to shine, right? That's their spotlight. And um, with everyone's cheering for Na'Vi, and I'm dead. There's this picture of me, like, laying down on the stage at this point. Like, I'm completely dead. <laughs> Because it's the adrenaline, it's the, the long thing of everything. Narvi's won, no, and then the room's real warm. So I'm just laying down, and then everyone starts chanting my name, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I said, I, like, I, said, I appreciate it, like, I'm, I'm, thank you, but like, I didn't want the crowd doing that. I wanted it all to be about Narvi. Mm -hmm. And then Sasha comes along, and then he encourages him to do it more. I'm like, God damn. I'm <laughs> Come like, on. <laughs> and I've just told him not to, and you're doing it further. <laughs> then we're taking some pictures, taking some videos and stuff afterwards. Narvi then go off and, and have to do their other media duties and things. And then I just sat with a crowd. I sat on the edge of the uh, the stage and I was just talking to everyone. And everyone was like giving me so much like positive. So I believe in something that's called energy exchange, which is mm -hmm. like if um, you spend time around people who have like bad energy or negative energy, then that starts to affect you and they might maybe suck the good energy out of you, you know? So I believe in like when you're with people and you, you're both positive, you both have like good thoughts, you can work together on it. It can be something good for you. And that, um, yeah. and and I felt so much of that that like people genuinely cared. Like people were were um supportive and 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 they were they were so understanding of the situation and sure. they obviously appreciated what I did at the major. But end of the day, I was I was just doing my job and, and yeah, it was like it was tough to do, 
but I got there in the end and, and I'm very thankful to the whole CSGO community for all the support and everything they did. Like I could never have imagined it. And like I've seen comments from people, I've seen even comments from like other people within the industry, and they're like, Oh, he's just doing this for attention and stuff. But it's like, first of all, fuck you, because that's like disgusting. And then and second of all, look at my social media from the very start and how I am. I put everything out there. I don't hide the good, the bad, or the ugly. I'm mm-hmm. just me. There's a lot of people that fake it, a lot of people that pretend, you yeah. know, and they they, yeah. they want to do things for cameras. Well, I've always put everything out there and I don't hold back. Because for me, the most important thing, and I've, I can be quoted on this so many times, is if I can inspire or help one other person, yeah, then I've done something good. And every now and again, I'll share like one of the people's stories if they're fine with it, like where they talk to me about a depression or I've helped them in some way. But I don't share even, I don't know, 10% of like what I actually get because it's not about me. It's also about the fact that we're in a position where we can do some good. And I'm no saint. I've done so much stuff wrong. But like, if I can do some good things now, then then I'm happy for it. And I feel like we're in such a unique situation because esports is huge. But we're not like on the sport level where you can't talk to the fans, you can't talk to these people. Like we can still be engaged with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I hope esports stays in that way where we can be so connected as like how we can just meet up, you know, from having like an Instagram message or like we can talk to someone on Twitter DMs and like have a, a good conversation. And th- there's there's bad people in everything. There's people who send death threats or they they say yeah. like bad things to you There's, that happens all the time football players get that esports people get that like that doesn't matter this is sadly part of it but what i love is that the good outweighs the bad at the moment and i just want to focus on the positives of that and so we got there this is where i am at the moment we're nearly getting towards the end of the year and then when we get to the end of the year i'm going to go just try and fix things here in kiev a bit and then go back to london see my son and try and just kind of get on with a bit of normal life for a bit and relax man Sure, sure. That's beautiful to hear. Uh, if you can do good, do good. And yeah, you, definitely. And you can always do uh, something good for someone. It's that's important thing. And 100%. you had a lot of uh, support from Brazil. Uh, oh, crazy! I had events. a print screen from from that day. Uh, yeah. In and we had a print screen. So <laughs> you said, I don't know what you did, Goles, but my Twitter is broken. <laughs> It won't load anything. Dude, I just keep I getting notifications. <laughs> so when I say normally, right? Like I've had this happen once before when I did um I did a piece of content and it was um I think something to do with Navi, just a piece of content interview that uh-huh. went up and I was tagged in it and like it broke my Twitter, right? So like the twi- <laughs> you can't open it, you can't open the app anymore. But oh what Gaules managed to do was because he showed Instagram and Twitter. Uh-huh. He destroyed both of them to start off with, but then the, <laughs> the phone just wasn't the phone wasn't working. Like I've not got an old phone. This is like a Samsung uh, <laughs> Samsung Galaxy S21, right? Not the best phone in the world, but not the worst well, phone. This this, this should be able to phone. do the good stuff, right? And <laughs> nothing worked. Like I couldn't open Twitter, I couldn't open Instagram. But then I tried to do <laughs> other stuff like WhatsApp or whatever else, and the phone was just because there were so many notifications going, and it's yeah. trying to vibrate. And it was actually getting warm, and I'm like. What on earth? So I had to, <laughs> it's going I had to, to get the notifications and just turn it off. Like, I just turned all notifications off. I couldn't do it. And then all, and all I saw was that it was Gorlas doing something. And I'm like, all right, cool. A lot like, of hearts. A lot of hearts. Yeah. Like, I, I, I said, I said thank you, but like I can't, I can't actually respond to anyone because it was so crazy. Like there was so, so many people, man. If you if you were to to send a message for Brazilian guys, that's your chance. You are going to share this video. I hope this video uh, reaches Gaule so that can yes. spread to everyone. So that's your time, man. Leave a message for, for your fans here in Brazil. So one thing I've always known and loved about the Brazilian community is that the, the passion is what you guys have straight away. And I know, sadly, there's, there's sometimes drama around what's said and how it's done, but I have only personally experienced a lot of love from the Brazilian community. And I've only seen good things in terms of like how you guys support your players and stuff. And I know MIBR are the top team out there, but you guys have got so many talented players and organizations that are coming up. It's an opportunity that like is, is crazy. And, and the support and love you guys give and, and the way you do it, it is your way. Maybe some people don't understand it all the time, but it's a very special way. It's a passionate way. It's an appreciated way as well. And obviously without the Brazilian community, oh my God, the, the numbers we have, you know, it wouldn't even be possible. The fact that you guys... <laughs> are so like key on actually making these events so big you know like all their streams numbers are huge but like without the community without the support from from brazil and just even just the portuguese speaking community right 
it would not be something that he's able to do. It would not be putting the numbers up for the tournament organizers, for the major stuff like that. And all of this is infrastructure that helps with like growing the industry on a, on a, on a big way and all of it's needed. But like, just stay positive, stay super happy, always try and think the best way you can about things. And if, if you love it, scream it, shout it. But like, if something doesn't go wrong, if, if you hate something, right? Sometimes you just got to take it. Sometimes that's just the way life deals you some bad cards. But one thing we'll always, always have is good Counter-Strike and good Counter-Strike players coming out of Brazil for sure. Perfect. Uh, my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. That's perfect. Man, uh, I really appreciate uh, your time here with us. I'm just having oh, thank you. one question, one final Go for question, it. and then I can show you something that I can... Uh, I'll just show you. Okay. <laughs> uh, our last question is about the major in Rio. Uh, they are talking Ooh, yeah. about. They are talking about major in Rio. Do you believe that it's possible next year major in Rio? And if it is, are you going to to do here with us? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, the Rio major would be with ESL, right? And uh, ESL okay. don't hire me at the moment. I would love to do it, but like, I don't do ESL. Come on, anymore. ESL. <laughs> I would oh. absolutely love it. I. I have never been to Brazil ever. I would absolutely never. love to go. Never in my life have I had a chance to go. So I'm inviting <laughs> you right now to come to my home in Brazil. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. If, if, ESL, if ESL don't hire me, I will have to find a way to come down and go, man. I'll have to come attend because I see people travel from Brazil all the way to Denmark, to Sweden, to the events. They come with their flags, they come with their families. And these are not just like the players' family, these are people who have saved up a lot of money, right? Yeah, and they found their way over just to support the teams. There's always, if you've got a Brazilian team on the stage, there's always a Brazilian team with the flags and their passion. Yeah, and that's different, scouting, right? <laughs> and and that's 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 crazy that they're going that far because if we're being honest, right? Not everyone sadly has enough money to be able to do that stuff. But these people are saving up a lot of money to take these big flights. It's a long way for them to go, and they've done it in an impressive way. So I will hopefully <laughs> be hired for the major. I would love to be hired for the major. So ESL, please take me to. Oh, we hope to. But if not. I'll come there anyway. But my, my thing is right now, we don't even know if it's going to be possible next year because Corona is such a, a, a sticky subject, you know? Yeah, and if, yeah. if they can't, um, if they can't make a safe enough environment then players just won't agree, like it has to be very uh, done in a considerate manner. And so that very much depends on how Brazil is. Like I, I still think next year in 2022, we're going to struggle to have that many offline LAN events. Like okay. Scandinavian countries are great, but even my home country of the United Kingdom, you wouldn't run an event there. It's, it's messed up. They're doing it badly. You know, we've mm -hmm. just seen um, like Germany's cases have gone up hugely as well. So it's yeah, like, it's it doesn't matter on what the country is. Some countries are just not well equipped for dealing with it right now. So personally, I think it might be 2023 that we get one. I'd be mm -hmm. happy if we get Rio in, uh, in, in 2022, that'd be amazing. But we just got to wait and see because It's all about the player safety first. You don't yeah, want anyone yeah, getting COVID. First, of course. Um, and obviously, it's also, you've got to think of it from this side. It's a PR nightmare. If you're the tournament organizer, yeah, you look at Blast, you look at PGL, no one got COVID, everyone stayed safe. You know, they were looking after themselves. Say you go to do the Rio Major and then someone gets COVID, it's going to look so bad on your event as a whole. It's not going to look good from the sponsor's perspective, the people that want yeah, to come and yeah. do it. So, like, everything has to be thought about. But we know for a fact we will eventually get a major in brazil and that's yes. what we've been waiting for and the thing is the one thing i want to understand is like first of all is there a big enough stadium like how many people are going to be they be able to get into it because i feel like that's going to be probably one of the loudest crowds we've ever had yeah I, i do hope i hope it's not like we had in um in denmark for uh blast final uh, full finals where uh -huh. if it's not a danish team they're not cheering and excited as much okay because the navi okay. final was quite good yeah but because it was navi versus vitality They weren't getting like the super raws the same, but when Australis were there, yeah. I could feel it in my chest. So I'm hoping the Brazilian fans are going to do us proud. And even if there's not a Brazilian team like who make it all the way to the finals, we still get that passion. We still get that excitement just for some good goddamn Counter Strike. Man, we got that energy. We don't yeah. care if we, it's a Brazilian team or not. We are go good. there good. to make some noise and yep. do the, the the party. Let me show you something. If okay, let's look. Uh, if you come to Brazil, I can. Uh, I can give you a gift, and you can choose one of another. Uh, let me pick up here. Uh, you can choose one of these. Oh, you got the orb. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's. Where did you get these from? I printed in a 3D uh, A 3D printer. printer. Damn. Yeah. 
You should be so, selling those things, man. You know what we, yeah, we lack I'm in Counter Strike? Yeah, in yeah, Counter Strike, we lack um, memorabilia and stuff. You know? Yeah, and we got I know TV, that. Things. If you are oh, an AK as well, there's so much yeah. detail. Yeah, that's it's crazy. crazy. And and the thing is, right? I love Valve, but if you look at what they make, they make some T-shirts, some mouse pads, the, the keyboards mm. and stuff. Cool. But I do think we got enough fans now. Like they did the. I've got a Hyper Beast hoodie. You know, yeah. when that was released. That's dope, but I would also love some stuff to like have on the wall or things like that. You know, I got Mortal Kombat behind me. I got Soul Calibur. Mm -hmm. I got like I got nothing Counter Strike. There's no there's no Counter Strike things because there. like, there's nothing. Yeah, so, so I want to I want to see that start to come up. Yeah, yeah, I'm, we are planning to sell in these things next year, but nice. It's a gift that I would love to give to you yeah. uh, when you come to Brazil. I got, I got or... more reason to come then. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> and we have a, a this article too. Let me show you. Oh. I can oh, send I, I can send one of well. the one, one of these to Nico if you Damn. can. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it to Nico. <laughs> Cuz he's amazing with the deagle. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last yeah. shot to get a horn him. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Nico, if you are watching this, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Keota. that's it. El, el famoso Keota. Do you know the 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 word Keota? No, what's Keota? Keota is when you shot someone with a headshot. Uh, with Jiggle, always. Oh, really? That's what you say. Always, hey. you, you get a headshot with Jiggle. You call Keota. This is it. We we call it the one D. So if it's a, if it's a one bullet Deagle headshot, you just yeah, call it one, one D, bullet. You know? Yeah, but, yeah. The, oh, yeah. you call it one D. Yeah. See, no, just, no. just shorten the Deagle down. Ours is very more funny. Yeah, your, yours is always better, man. <laughs> when this comes in Portuguese, do you guys just make shit sound better. <laughs> yes. If we scream Keota. Oh, hey, when it hits, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna have to remember that when I'm streaming. I'm gonna have to remember <laughs> that. <laughs> Are you streaming on Twitch? Only, no, not much. Not like if not I much? if I decide to play, I, I'll do it a little bit. Like I, I don't have like huge followers or anything like that because I'm not regular streamer. Like okay. Pimp and, and Maniac and stuff, they stream a lot. But what I'll do is like if I'm in the mood and I'm feeling like okay, cool, I'm gonna go pop some heads. I'll just stream a little bit and jump on. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So James, thank you. We are very no, thank you. glad to, to be with you. Uh, when it's uh, ready, we can share to you, of course. Awesome. Uh, if you can share with your friends, of course, of uh, course. Sasha, of course, uh, yeah. we can send a Brazilian hug for them and <laughs> everyone who knows. And I'm very, very sorry for your loss. Um, thank you. I, I, I don't know what's been through, but I can send you some good toughs and that is.